Hello again everyone! This video is part of my video series about the game of Go. So far, in my Beyond the Rules series, we have come across two types of weaknesses. One is liberty shortage. Of course, a group that has no liberties will be removed from the board. So a group which has very few liberties will oh, is in danger of being captured. The second one, or well, the second weakness we encountered, was a baseless group surrounded by enemy stones. For example, this white stone. Which stone? This stone is surrounded by the enemy, so the opponent stones. So white stones surrounded by black stones, and it doesn't have a base, a place on the side where it could make eyes if it needs to, later. So this is a weak group, or a weak stone. Stones could be made of fun groups, whereas if White was paying attention, he could create a base for a group in one of a few ways. We're not here to discuss which is better, just the fact that both are probably better than having this stone sandwiched between two black stones. But there is a third type of weakness, one which I'd like to introduce in this video, one which many of you probably already know, even if you're just a ranked beginner, because this issue appears in pretty much every guide about the game. And this is called cutting points. Let's see an example. What are cutting points first? Cutting points are simply points on the board on which one of the players can split, can cut the opponent's shape in two. If he plays a, for example, white has a cutting point, black, sorry, has a cutting point here. If white plays them, the two black groups. are now cut apart and cannot easily connect, or can't connect at all, actually. Why are cutting points, points so important? Well, when you cut apart two groups, then let's compare what happens if they weren't cut apart, compared with them being cut apart. Say, for instance, that the groups were solidly connected. Suddenly, they have so many liberties. Now let's just count the liberties. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine liberties. And they have many ways to create bases for eyes if they ever need it. That means this is quite a strong group. It can expand in multiple directions. It has many liberties. Whereas after being cut, suddenly this black group, the two stones on the left, only has three liberties, uh, the A group, and the B group only has four. Suddenly both groups are a lot easier to handle. Instead of having one strong group, black found himself with two very vulnerable groups. Notice that with the groups cut apart, each group has less options, not only less liberties, but less options to create a base. The A group will only find a base in, on this side, and the B group will probably find it in this direction, down the right edge. So what to do? What to do with this cut? How... oh, excuse me. How do we handle this cut? Well, black, if it's black's turn, he will probably want to think of a way to defend the cut. And there are plenty of ways to defend the cut. We're not going to judge the better or worse ways here. Just in this beginner video, just showing the main ideas. Black can, if he wants, of course, solidly connect. As we've seen, that completely defends the cut. But 
you will not always want to make this move. Actually, you will often not want to make it at all, because while it solidly connects your groups, it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't expand your group, it doesn't help you to control more areas and territory, it doesn't create any eye shape if you need it later. It only connects. It's a fine move for connection. It's the most solid connection, the strongest connection that there is. The second type of connection and protecting the cutting point is called the tiger's mouth. And this would be this move or this move, creating this shape. And this protects the cutting point because if white ever tries to cut now, then black can just capture it. There is no real cut there anymore. So this also protects the cutting point, and as you can see, it also slightly helps black expand just a tiny bit on top. It also starts creating a bit of eye shape if later black needs it in the center. So this move is trying to develop a bit faster. Are there more ways to defend the cut? Of course there are. For example, this move defends the cut. Because if white tries to cut, well, you all know what a letter is, so if you've seen the video or just read about it or seen it elsewhere, this is, there are just simple letters in this case. The white will be devastated. Oh, so there are many, many, many ways to defend cutting points. It's important to notice them and to be able to use them if necessary. Next, there is a thing called useless cuts, and I'd like to show a very simple example. We'll just change this position. Let's just consider this position. This, in this position, black still has a cut in the same point. But the problem is that if black defends the cut, what is he actually defending? Which group? Which group needed help here? If white just cut, now let me just get rid of all the all these. If white cuts, now what? What is he attacking? The A group, this group, already has a solid base along the side. It's practically a living group. And the right side group, the B group, already has this white stone, marked, the marked white stone, under control, and has some, some base some kind of a base on the right side. So bo both groups, both black groups are practically alive here. And that's a very common mistake for beginners who have learned what cuts are. They try to cut everywhere without thinking if the cuts are useful. The purpose of a cut is to split off a weak group for attack. And in this position, both black groups are pretty much almost alive. And there is no point in cutting two living groups. It serves no purpose. Actually, it does serve one purpose. White has changed the position. He has created a weak group for himself. Which group? This group. A stone marked as one. It will not give white any territory, because there are black stones all around and safe ones. And if it dies, black will have even more. So this cutting stone is actually a burden for white. So this is important. Don't cut groups you think are impossible to attack. Cut if you think you can gain something. An important issue with cutting points is when you have several cuts. For example, if you have more than one cut, for example this this is a very simple sequence. You might have seen it in your games. It's an invasion sequence. 
And if we stop here and search for the cutting point in Black's formation, and there are two here and here. You might think that the three stones on top, three st square marked stones, are pretty strong, so it doesn't really matter. But the fact that there are two cutting points instead of just one makes the, makes the cuts a lot more dangerous. For example, if if that cutting point didn't exist, let's just say this was con connected, or even with a tiger's mouth, and why try to cut? Well, that can just capture. Even if it's a solid connection, this is just a ladder, isn't it? If black wants to, they can, ca they can capture a cutting stone, or make it feel very weak. Surrounded by black, black stones. But there are two cutting points. Now, if black doesn't defend and white cuts, how exactly is this stone supposed to be captured? Because if you try to run it, to run your stone, then suddenly you're under threat. You're in a tar, you're two stones. If they connect, suddenly your shape got split, your stones got cut apart completely. And if you try to just go this way, then you're pretty much losing the stone, S15. And you can try to keep it, but you have to run on the second line for it. And this time, and this time you're not really that strong. And if white wants to, he can start. He may be able to start running this way, depending on what other stones are in the area. Having two cutting points next to each other, where one side of the two cuts, cutting points contains a weak group, or even two sides in here, out of the three groups, the stone marked with one and the stones marked with two are both can both be considered slightly weak if they're cut off. The stone market, market one will be very weak if it's cut off. When you have two cutting points next to each other, we the cuts a are a lot more dangerous than they look. A lot more. So, when you do face that scenario, with two cutting points next to each other, be very inclined to defend. In this position, that would usually defend, and have a very nice position along down the right side. And last, and but not least, <laughs> some cuts look a bit different than what we've seen. Actually, most cuts in the game. Most cuts appear as a threat to push and cut, as a threat to create the position where the cutting point arises. And we'll see an example of that now. Here. For example, in this position. There may seem to be no cut at all, but whenever white wants, you can just push and cut. Splitting the bottom black groups from the top ones. Is this cut dangerous? Not really. Black can just capture the black and the white stone quite easily. But the fact that the cut is there is important to note because sometimes these cuts can be dangerous. For example, what if there's a white stone here? If you don't pay any attention, suddenly you won't you may not like this cut. Now black doesn't like it very much. And for example, if, if for another example, this one here. Sometimes the cut is created by honey, threat to honey, for example. Honey. If black doesn't want to be split, he cuts, and white has, has also cut black. So both sides actually are cut apart now. It's important to note these things and 
think if you want to prevent them or not. We won't be discussing strategy in this video, just show examples of different cuts. And mm -hmm. lastly, one of the most common types of cuts is the peak, which is not really a cut, but just a threat to cut. For example, this black move here. It doesn't really seem like there's no cut, but if, especially if you just start playing. But suddenly you see the black starts to push, and if you, suddenly your two sides are cut apart because uh, that can just cut you apart into two very weak groups. And I'm sure that as white well, you won't like that, so you probably want to just connect. So we've seen many types of cuts and different ways to create them and defend them. The important thing is pay attention to them. Punish your opponent for not protecting, protecting his cuts and if you think a cut of your own is a dangerous one, defend it. The moral of this lecture is keep your weak groups safely connected or strong by having the base or not being under any threat whatsoever, of course. But don't let your weak groups be cut apart. That is the start of having your stones captured and losing the game by a huge margin. I hope this was a useful lecture. Please feel free to leave your comments down below. And thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye!